Hello, blocks two, three, and four. It is Thursday, March the 19th. And for your lesson today, we're going to start with the activator, which is on Google Classroom, which is on writing linear functions. And then after that, uh, there is a math games for you to do, which is practicing the power rule that you learned yesterday. And then we'll do something else today with negative exponents. So the first thing I want you to do is the activator. And if you know how to do it, you can do it on your own. If not, stay on the video and I will go through the activator with you. All right, so in our activator, it, the directions are to read the following scenarios and write a linear function that models each scenario. So if I read the first one, it says Valerie babysits to earn some extra money on the weekends. She charges $10 for the first hour and $5 for each hour after that. So if I were going to write a linear function in the form of y equals mx plus b that models this particular situation, I would write y equals and she charges $5 for each hour. So that's going to be 5x plus $10 for the first hour. And the reason that $10 goes there is because $10 is her starting point or where she starts. So remember, your slope or your rate of change is always what's matched with the per hour because those are the words that indicate change. And then the tan is what indicates the first hour or something that's a starting point. All right, so then for my next one, it says Toby operates a catering service and charges $100 for setup and $30 per hour for an event. All right, so if you read this one, just to have Toby show up to cater your party or your event, you're going to pay $100. So y equals, that's my starting point. Toby starts with $100, and then it's $30 per hour after that. So 30 is what indicates change. So 30x plus 100 is going to be um, your linear function for that one. I look at number three. Number three says, Constant charges $5 for each pie she bakes and an overhead charge of $25. So again, how much does she charge per each pie that she bakes? $5. So that's going to be 5x. And then her overhead charges, which is the electricity, the fuel, everything else that goes along with that, is going to be... 25. So y equals 5x plus 25. Number four says, Manuel is draining his swimming pool. It holds 18,000 gallons and drains at a rate of 1,500 gallons per hour. Okay? So it holds or it starts with 18,000 gallons. So y equals, I start with 18,000 gallons. And it drains at a rate of 1,500 gallons per hour. So my rate of change is 1,500 per hour. Now, since I'm losing 1,500 because it starts with 18 and it's draining, which means it's losing, I'm going to have y equals a negative 1,500x plus 18,000. Or, because it makes a little bit more logic and mathematical sense, in this case, to put your starting point first, minus 1,500 per hour. So either way is acceptable. I think that the second way, since you're losing, is a little bit more logical and mathematical than the other way. But either way is acceptable. All right. And then for the last one, it says Mallory 
is harvesting apples. She begins the day with 30 bushels and adds two bushels per hour. How many bushels does she have at the end of eight hours? So Mallory, Y equals, she begins the day with 30 bushels. So that's my starting point. She begins with 30 bushels and she adds two bushels per hour. So y equals 2x plus 30, because this is what's changing each hour. Each hour, uh, her amount is changing by two. Now the question is, how many bushels does she have at the end of eight hours? So again, I've got two variables here. I have a y and an x. And I'm being asked, after eight hours, how many bushels does she have? So I'm gonna substitute that eight in for x. So y equals two, times eight plus 30. So y is going to equal two times eight is 16 plus 30. So y Mr. equals- Mr. Tim and Ms. Sharon, could you please come to the front office, please? Y equals 46. So that means after eight hours, she will have 46 bushels of apples. So that is the activator. What I want you to do now is go to Math Games and complete the 20 problems on there that concern the uh, power to a power rule that you learned yesterday. And then after that, come back to the start the video again, and we're going to be going over what we call negative exponents. All right, so today we're gonna go over what negative exponents are. Now, as we start negative exponents, Let's uh, begin with what we already know. So we already know our rules of exponents, that if I have three to the fourth times three to the fifth, that I simply keep my base and I add my exponents, which gives me three to the ninth power, okay? Then if I have the division of exponents, so if I have three to the eighth power divided by three to the fourth power. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna keep my base, but this time I subtract my exponents. So that's gonna be three, and I'm gonna subtract four from eight. So eight minus four is four, so I have three to the fourth power. Now, the, we, we learned yesterday what we call the power to the power rule, and that is if I have three, to the third power, and all of that raised to the fourth power, that I keep my base, and I would multiply those exponents, so my answer is gonna be three to the 12th, okay? Now, one thing that we've seen happen from time to time, and we haven't really dealt with it until now, is what we call a negative exponent. So, for example, let's suppose I have three to the fourth power divided by three to the sixth power. If I used my normal rule and kept my base and subtracted six from four, or did four minus six, I'm gonna have three to the negative second power. And that gives me what we call a negative exponent. Well, there's a way that we deal with negative exponents we don't want to leave an, a neg an exponent as a negative. We want to turn that exponent into a positive exponent. And I'm going to show you how we turn an exponent from a negative into a positive. All right, so let's look at where this comes from real quick here. So let's suppose I have x to the second power divided by x to the sixth power. Well, I know if I use my normal rule of exponents, I'm gonna keep my base, which is gonna be x, and I'm gonna subtract six from two, or do two minus six, so that means I have x to the negative fourth power. Well, the way I'm gonna write this as a positive exponent is you need to remember, we're gonna do what we call write it as a reciprocal, or we're just gonna flip it. So what you need to remember is that any time I have a number or a variable and I want to write it as a fraction, it has that imaginary one that is in the denominator. 
And we don't always use this one unless we need to, to write it as a fraction. So if I'm gonna write x to the negative fourth over one as its reciprocal to make it a positive exponent, I'm simply gonna flip it and write it as one over x to the fourth. And when I move my numerator into my denominator, it goes from being a negative exponent to becoming a positive exponent. So anytime I see a negative exponent, the thing that I'm gonna remember is jump the line, change the sign. And I'm gonna write that over here for you. Let me just angle it a little bit this way, or we're gonna write either jump or cross the line change the sign. All right, that's all you're gonna do is cross the line and change the sign. So if I have three to the negative third, I'm simply going to think of that as a fraction as three to the negative third over one. So I'm gonna rewrite it as its reciprocal. So when I cross the line, I change the sign and I go from having three to the negative uh, third to th one over three to the third, which would equal one over 27, because three times three is nine times three is 27, okay? If I had two to the negative third, I'm simply gonna do the same thing. Remember that I have that as a fraction, so I'm gonna cross the line and change the sign and write that as one over two to the third, which gives me one over eight, because two times two is four, and then four times two is going to be eight. So that's how I go from writing a negative exponent to a positive exponent. So from now on, anytime you have an answer that turns out to be a negative exponent, you're gonna write it as a positive exponent by crossing the line and changing the sign. So what would happen then if I had a problem like one over x to the negative fourth? Well, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna write it as its reciprocal or write it as its opposite. So that's just gonna be x to the fourth over one. Instead of making my numerator my denominator, I'm gonna make my denominator my numerator and my exponent will become positive and that would simply equal x to the fourth. All right, if I had one over three to the negative third, same thing, I'm just gonna rewrite it, cross the line, change the sign, see, cross the line, change the sign, and that would give me an answer of 27. So that's all you need to remember for negative exponents is cross the line, change the sign, move your in this case, your denominator to your numerator, or in the other case, your numerator to your denominator. Okay, one more example before we're done, where we're actually gonna prove why this is what it is. So let's go back to my original example that I'd had about x to the fourth divided by x to the sixth. So if I keep my base and subtract, four minus six gives me x to the negative second power. Then if I'm gonna write that as a positive exponent, I'm gonna write one over x squared. But you're at the point in math now where we don't just want to accept things as they are, we want to be able to prove things. So here's the proof of why this works. We see up here that four minus six is negative two, and to write it as a positive exponent, I write it as one over x squared. So let's expand this, so I have x times x, times x times x, so that's x to the fourth, four x's, and then I have six x's in my denominator because that would be x to the sixth. That's how it is expanded. All right, so if I were to do this division, x divided by x is one, so those two cancel out. 
x divided by another x is 1, so those two cancel out. x divided by another x is 1, so those two cancel out. And then this x divided by this x is a 1, so those x's cancel out. So I'm left with 1 over how many x's here? 2 x's. And those two x's equal what? x times x equals x squared. So you see, this is why it works. This is why we can simply have this rule of 4 minus 6 is a negative 2, but to write it as a positive exponent, we can just flip it, cross the line, change the sign and flip it to 1 over x squared because if I were to expand it like I did here, I end up with 1 over x times x, which is 1 over x squared. So let me just leave that up there for a moment for you to look at. So before we're done for the day, on your Google Classroom, there is another mashup math video that I would like for you to watch. Additionally, for your assignment, your assignment says to solve and express your answer in a fraction. So here's what you're going to do. For example, if it says 3 to the negative second power, what I want to see you write on your sheet is 3 to the negative second power equals 1 over 3 squared. And this is as far as you need to go. You don't need to uh, do 3 squared is 9. I just want to see you cross the line and change the sign and flip those fractions. Okay, so if you see 4 to the negative third, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to write it as 1 over 4 to the third. All right, if you were to see 30 to the negative second power, same thing. You just write it as 1 over 30 squared. All right, so that's all you're going to be doing. So watch the mashup math video, then do the worksheet that's that is uh, that I've scanned up there for you to do, and make sure you take a picture and upload it to Google Classroom. And I will see you tomorrow. And again, another math production brought to you by Mr. Gillard and the Pixel Four.